Are you craving an unforgettable dining experience? Then you don't want to miss Paddlefish. Join us as we embark on a culinary journey like no other. But before we do that, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you liked any more Disney Springs content and ring that bell for those updates. Let's go eat. We are at Paddlefish celebrating Christy and I's 12th anniversary. We wanted to take you along with us on this culinary journey to see what we think. What do you think, Christy, so far about the menu? I like it. Take a look at the menu here. Looks like we might have some great starters. We might go for the crab cake here in a little bit. And then, I'm not sure what I'm gonna get yet, but plenty of seafood options for you. Soups and salads, sides to share from the land. And then on the back, you've got your drinks. You might try that Lily Steamboat Breeze. Different wines. Things like that. We just ordered our appetizer. We are gonna end up with the crab cake, which is a crab cake with mock cho, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, fr frying, fried green tomato and remoulade. Um, and then Christy ordered one of the specialty drinks, which is gonna be the Lily Steamboat Breeze, which is a broad bent rose, or probably rose, with cat head honeysuckle, I believe that's a vodka, elderflower and fresh lemon. So just to give you a little bit of history about Paddlefish. Before Paddlefish, it was called Fulton's Crab House. However, before that, this location was called the Empress Lily, which was named after Lily, Walt Disney's wife. So Paddlefish decided they wanted to go ahead and name a drink after that background. So that's why you have the Steamboat Breeze. One thing of note that I like about the water that they bring in, they actually bring your lemon on a tray instead of lemon in the water, so you can do it yourself. Plus, they have a real candle. That just shows you how awesome this place is already, and it smells so good in here. If you look at the boathouse there, you might be able to see some raindrops out on the window because it is pouring outside in this beautiful Florida weather. Something we missed out on, but that's okay. We're inside and going to enjoy this wonderful dinner for our anniversary. Christy has her drink now. How is it? It's really good. It's not too fruity, but I was expecting it to be a little bit more dry. It really isn't. It's a kind of like has a sparkling to it. And it definitely has a really good flavor. But the other drink, the other little you know, drink confused things is I think is a little bit better. I like the vodka, but I think gin is a little what puts it over the top a little bit more. But and this what, is really good. And what's this other Lily drink you're talking about? So my favorite drink at Disney Springs is called the Lily Bell and it's at um Wolfgang Pub. And it's a secret drink on the menu. And it's literally wife's oh it's literally Walt's wife's go-to drink. And it has gin in it and it's amazing. And it's also pink. But it has more fruity flavor. <laughs> and then what is that? Is that a raspberry in there? No, there's a cherry. Oh, it's a cherry in the cherry. That's so cool. So it's really good. Very nice. But I would order this again. <laughs> it's really good. We just ordered our food and Christy's gonna get the shrimp and grits, which has cheddar grits and a black pepper butter sauce. Our server did say that he, it was one of his favorites. He likes the sauce, he likes it better than the shrimp pasta, which was where we were trying to compare to see what she would prefer. He said he didn't like the broth in the shrimp pasta as much, so we went to shrimp and grits. He says it has more flavor. We're gonna give that a try and see how that is. We love to get servers recommendations, so definitely doing that. For myself, um, I am actually going to get the gluten-free option, which is the scallops. It comes with a cauliflower puree, perico vert, and then a honey saffron vinaigrette. And then we're also going to be doing a side to share, another gluten-free option. It's going to be an edamame bacon succotash. I mean, it's got bacon in it. We love edamame. I mean, usually succotash has lima beans. Edamame is a great alternative better in protein. We think we're going to enjoy that a lot. Now I'm going to go ahead and give this drink a try. Definitely has a nice bite to it. It's because of the vodka. But it is sweet. It's not dry at all. If you like your sweeter drinks. Uh, I wasn't expecting it to be as sweet as it is. Really, really good. I think you would enjoy if you like your sweeter drinks. 
such as this. Our crab cakes have arrived, and as Christy just said, this looks amazing. You gonna give it a first try there? Okay. <laughs> Into it. And you can just see the meat coming right out of that. Like you can tell it's not overly breaded. And that steam is just so steaming, yeah. Alright, ready? Amazing. Best crab cake ever. Yes. It reminds me of like I used to go to this old like seafood place and they had the crab cakes. It reminds me of that but like more meatier. But it does, it does have a lot of flavor. And this on the bottom, right here, is so creamy and delicious. Is that the green, the fried green tomato? The green tomato, it's like the, the creaminess to it and delicious to where it cuts out the fat. Does it make sense? Yeah, complements it really well. And it's so good. Like, I don't know if Mike's gonna get any. <laughs> well, we're gonna give it a try now. Let's see how this tastes. So good. I don't know, words can't even explain that crab cake. You don't taste like there's breading there at all. It's just enough to add to the flavor of the crab. And that green tomato, fried green tomato, it just complements it so well. If you're here at Paddlefish, definitely gotta eat the crab cakes. We saw it on the menu before we came here and we were like, we have to get crab cakes. We're both crab cake connoisseurs, we love them. And as she said, that seafood place she's talking about, I don't think I've had better crab cakes since then. And these might just be the best at this point. Christy was saying too that the corn here is actually what's adding the spice. You can tell there's peppers in there as well. It looks like it's a fire roasted corn. And then as they also brought in our rolls. They look like Parker House rolls with some nice creamy butter. And uh, I'm assuming they're warm. Oh, they're definitely, definitely <laughs> warm. It's probably why we were waiting. That's probably why we got our appetizer first because they're probably just coming out of the oven and Christy loves her soft warm bread. I love warm bread. It's so good. So fluffy. I don't know how to explain it. That's just a good dinner roll. <laughs> Let me grab one myself. Put some butter on it. Mm. You can tell it's freshly baked. It's a perfect crust. It's not crunchy like a sourdough, but it adds to the fluffiness of the interior. Oh, she did dip it in the, the, the corn mix here. I'll try this now as well. So I added some of that corn that was in the crab cake. Let's see how that tastes. So far, every aspect of this dinner, we haven't even gotten to the entrees yet. Really, really good. Our entrees have arrived. There's Christie's shrimp and grits. We have the succotash there with the edamame and the bacon. You can definitely see the big pieces of bacon in that. And then here's my entree. We've got the cauliflower mash, the scallops, and the hair cover. This all looks really, really good. Christie's gonna try the shrimp and grits, at least the shrimp. And see how that is. It's perfectly like cooked shrimp. This sauce is really good, but it's super spicy. So if you're not a spice fan, it might be a little much. But I am, so I like it a lot. The grits are really creamy, so it offsets the spice. Very cheesy, so you can't go wrong with house-made grits. So it's really good. I would eat all this. <laughs> now I'm gonna try some of the scallops. We get some of the scallops. We get some of that cauliflower mash with it. The scallops perfectly seared, not overdone in any way. Pairs really well with that cauliflower mash. You can't tell it's cauliflower. If you're hesitant about cauliflower mash and like potatoes, it's a great alternative, especially if you're gluten free and you don't want to have those extra carbs. It's totally amazing. And that sauce on top, it's very buttery. It just adds to that extra fattiness that's needed in this dish. So good. So I think Christy's gonna try some of the succotash, see how that is. It's good. Corn obviously gives you the sweetness. The automatic beans are perfectly cooked. They're not too dry. The corn and beans itself are not like seasoned very well but you do get that smoky bacon 
to the smoky bacon here. It has a lot of smoked flavor. That complements everything so well that I don't mind it not being like salted or anything like that. It kind of tastes like it's in it was like I think it's like made in the fat of the of the pork. Like the bacon fat doesn't can't go wrong. Like you really can't. So I like it. Some people might think it's a little bland for them if they don't have it with the bacon mix and every, every bite, but I would eat it. Well, until August 13th, we have the Disney Springs Flavors of Florida, preserved by Corksicle. And one of those dishes they have on this menu is actually here at the Paddlefish. The key lime pie with graham cracker crust and torch meringue. And that just happens to be what we have for our dessert. All right, do you want to give that a try? All right. So first of all, I'm not gonna lie. Usually when you get key lime pie, anywhere I go, it's like an inky dicky little key lime pie. So this is a really good slice, but I have to love the meringue and how toasted this meringue is. Like, come on. Like, this is gonna be the best part, I'm gonna have to say. But we're gonna try it anyway. It's so pretty. It's definitely not a sliver of pie. That's a good slice of pie right there. Gotta get some marine in there. Okay. Typically your feline pie, it has that tartness to it. It definitely does. But it has more of a custard custard -y feel than normal. But this marine is like off the chart. Like I'm not gonna lie, I can just eat this by itself. It's so good. But I feel like key lime, you will definitely like this. Now it's my turn to try the key lime pie. Get some of that meringue in there and that graham cracker crust. For key lime pies, this is not as tart. You can tell there's key lime in it, but it is really good. Definitely big enough to share. So, uh, you know, it is a huge slice, especially after the great dinner here. Also, just to let you know, that shrimp and grits that we had did get spicier as we went along. So this is a nice compliment to that as far as cooling that off because it did get a little spicy. But either way, one of the best key lime pies that we've ever had. I wanted to go ahead and let you know about this meringue here that Christy was talking about because I'm going to try this some of it by itself. As you might know with meringue, it's basically just egg whites. But this tastes more like marshmallow fluff. It's definitely the sweetness that added to the, to the tartness of the key lime. So just keep that in mind. It's not just a pure meringue. I think they, they definitely add some sugar in there. But again, that's why you get the caramelization of that, that great browning of, of the meringue itself. Paddlefish was a great dinner, but now we want to get another drink. So we're here at the Enzo's Hideaway to see what we can find. We're sitting at the bar. They have a good selection of wines between sparkling rosé whites and reds. But we're not here for that. We are here for not the food, which they have. It looks like a good Italian menu, but we're here for cocktails. Let's find one we're going to like. Let's take a look at some of those that are listed there. We did look at the paper menus that they had here, but we didn't find a drink we wanted. However, we saw a flight that we were making, and it's called their Summer Flight, otherwise known as their Bell Temple Flight. And I think we're gonna order that, but it, it concludes an Il Tramonto, which is an Espelon tequila, butterfly pea-infused vodka, triple sec, peach brandy, orange juice, grenadine, and lime juice. Then the Summer Dream, which is a butterfly pea-infused gin, St. Germain, Prosecco, lemon juice, and honey syrup. And then a Dawn in Milan, which is a Tito's vodka, Campari, orange juice, lemon juice, and agave. Sounds really good, it looked really good. I think that's what we're gonna try. In fact, if you guys can grab that QR code right there on your screen, you can see the menu they have there in that flight they have, because one of those drinks does have the Tito's vodka in it, the Dawn in Milan. That's actually one of the ingredients of the flight. All those three drinks are $19 each, but the flight is going to be $29, so you get a sample of all three.
Thank you so much. We have the El Tramonito, and your Dawn in Milan, and lastly, your Summer Dream. All right, let's go ahead and try these. Christy is a gin person, so she's going to do the Summer Dream first. I'm going to try it, ready? Right? It looks like it was terrible. This is so good. It's just like, it's like I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> Good. And that's got your butterfly pea infused gin, your Saint Germain, your Prosecco, lemon juice, and your honey syrup. I'm gonna try the summer dream drink now as well. Yeah, definitely um, you taste the Prosecco in there more than anything. I don't really taste the, the gin, but I know gin tends to be very like the neutral back. flavor. So yeah, kind of at the back. Of yeah. They gave us a little stir. I'm gonna try to stir this one up a little bit, see if it tastes any different. Yeah, okay, now I brought the flavors together. Um, it, the sweetness in there, the honey syrup that's in there, you can taste the nuts mixed in. So Christy already stirred that Dawn in Milan, so she's gonna give that one a try now. The vodka's mixed in pretty well there. Okay. Very grapefruity. So if you like the tartness of grapefruit, this is definitely a go-to. I'm not a big fan of the grapefruit, but the vodka like gives it an edge. <laughs> the lemon, you get like right at the end of it. It's doable, but I don't know if I would drink like a big drink of it. But it's okay. But the summer dream, you would drink a whole thing of that. I would drink a whole thing of that. So. And then again, this Dawn in Milan has Tito's homemade vodka, Campari, orange juice, lemon juice, and agave. So I'm gonna try this now. Oh wow, I actually like this one better than I like the Summer Dream. <laughs> um, Chrissy said it tastes like a spiked grapefruit, and I can taste that. Although there's not really grapefruit in it, exactly. I think. <laughs> Yo, know, that mixture of the vodka with the juice, the orange juice especially, you can taste that. Then there's that bite that grapefruit gives you, that 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 almost like a bitterness to it. And it even has that color, it's a very pinkish color, like a grapefruit. So really good. Um a good selection. We love doing our flights because we get to try a little bit of everything and then later on, next time, we might decide to do something in full. Christy and tequila don't go well together, so we're going to try this Il Tramonto, which is the Espelon tequila, butterfly pea infused vodka, which is what we had. Well, we had butterfly pea infused, infused gin in the summer dream, but this one's got the vodka, triple sec, peach brandy, orange juice, grenadine, and lemon juice, which, or I'm sorry, lime juice, which for me, this looks like something I would really like. This looks really good. I like the orange that they put the garnish they put in there. Let's give us a try. Whoa. What do you stir? I think I need to stir that one a little bit. But grenadine sits at the bottom. So we're gonna stir that and mix those flavors in. Because uh, otherwise that alcohol's sitting right on top. It's even a prettier color now though. But now it's got that glow, that strawberry glow to it. Let's try that. Okay. Much better. Absolutely better. That grenadine stands out. Um, the tequila doesn't hit as hard. I could probably do this. Thankfully, we're not driving. By the way, make sure you drink responsibly. We're, uh, we took the bus to Disney, uh, to our, to Disney Springs from our hotel, from Disney's Contemporary Resort. Definitely make sure you do that. We're not, you know, we're not, oh, we're not condoning uh, driving while you're drinking. Obviously, make sure you have a designated driver and things like that, just to let you know. But this is really good. I convinced Christy to take a sip of this El Tramonto. Let's see how she thinks. Let's see how it is. It ain't bad. I mean, I do drink a margarita, but I feel like she poured a lot of it in here. So, but it, it does taste pretty good. But that summer dream with the Prosecco is going to be your favorite, it's right? Best. If you've been following our videos over the last couple of days, you'll see that we've been staying at Disney's Contemporary Resort. But we're back here now at the resort. Thank you so much for coming along with us to share me and Chrissy's anniversary journey at Paddlefish and at Enzo's Hideaway. Hopefully you got some good information out of it. If you enjoyed the content, 
You can see our other videos in this series on the upper right hand corner. I'll put some information in the description and comments as well. And again, if you've liked the video, please make sure you like this video, share it with your family and friends. Subscribe to the channel to get any more information on Disney Springs and any other Disney information and content we bring you. And click on that bell, that way you get those updates. As always, it has been a great big beautiful day. I hope you've had one too, and we'll see you real soon.